Good morning, Internet. Welcome to an oxygen not included tech tip video. I got a request from a viewer about petroleum boilers, not just, you know, here's a big fancy boiler, but also some tips on how to actually make them. So this is my little starter base. I got some dupes running on some wheels to get them some athletics. And then I'd use this for a test before. So we're going to come down here and kind of go over some of the basics of building a petroleum boiler and why. So I got some suit docks. Okay, and let's just have these dupes. Ah, right here seems like a perfectly fine place to get down into the area. Oh, I'm still in debug mode. That's all right, we'll get them to run. And dig. And... No. So why do we want petroleum boilers? And the reason being is... Well, they're going to come down here and build. So when you first start off, you can use the oil refinery. Now the oil refinery, see if it says it in here. Yeah, right here. Crude oil input of 10 kilograms a second, output five kilograms. So you lose half of your oil using this. Sure, you get natural gas and that's just about enough natural gas to run a natural gas generator. So you get 800 watts of power, but this thing uses half of that. So, while the oil refiner is good at the beginning, it is so wasteful that you don't want to use it. So why a petroleum boiler? Well, oil has an evaporation point of 399, but it's not actually evaporating. At 400 degrees, it turns into petroleum. So all you have to do is get it warm. And there's a bunch of different ways of getting it warm. You can use magma, you can use a volcano, or you can use a thermium tepidizer. So that's what we're going to kind of go over, is how do you get in there and build it, and how does it work? But first, I got to wait for my dupes to catch up on the building so we can see this area a bit better. Now my dupes are down here. So first and most important thing when it comes to a petroleum boiler is magma is hot. 400 degrees to get from crude oil to petroleum is hot. You're going to want a vacuum. Whole bunch of ways of making a vacuum, but in the early game, it's liquid lock. So let's get to work on a liquid lock. And this is basically the simplest design where you have one gap here, two there. So that way you can put in water or oil or whatever, and that will seal it in. I don't want to dig up all of that. A nice little bottle emptier. We'll put some water in there. And there's some water. And my dudes can keep filling that. But once you get a blob there and a blob there, typically you're pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to seal over the top of this. And we'll just come down that way. And then I'm going to use the method as opposed to putting in a pump. I'm going to fill this all in with solid blocks, which will also push all of this debris over to the side. Because having a vacuum, very important. That way your dupes don't get scalded and you don't end up melting things. There's our nice sealed area. Now let's start filling it in with blocks. And that's all we keep doing by pushing from the right to the left. All the debris is just going to get pushed along with it. And hopefully you've got good builders that'll sit there and do it for you to make it go faster. And we are almost there, just waiting on my dupes to get these last few blocks and see all the air. Come on. It's all pushed over into here. All the debris is pushed over. Now 
And then I just gotta get that one last tile. And with that, and this being all nice and full of water, now if I deconstruct all those tiles, I'll have a nice vacuum to deal with. So, simple way of making a vacuum, very important. Now, one way of maintaining a vacuum is don't let critters in there. Because if a critter dies and their meat rots, then you can end up with a really bad day. So if you got critters running around like the poke shell, just kill them. Get them out of the way. Alright, so this is the basics of what is a very simple petroleum boiler. We got heat down here from the magma. We just got to get down to it. A little bit of counterflow to heat up the oil on the way in. And yeah, the important thing is steel. We need stuff that won't melt in magma. Every other form of metal, whether it's iron, gold, or copper from the early game, is going to melt. So you need steel. Now this is a vacuum. I can dig down, I'll probably just say over into here, and get down to the magma. Now, anything that comes into contact with the heat source, whether it's the magma or the steel that you're going to use, you want to make it out of obsidian. So if you're worried about anything touching, switch to obsidian. It's just easier. I prefer the diagonal building method so that I can get some steel tiles put over here without actually having to touch them. And sweeping up your debris so it doesn't come in contact with the hot stuff prevents weird things from melting, which is a good idea. So we want a couple of steel tiles. We'll put them in like that. And our dupe should be able to dig that abyss light. If it falls down, it's not a big deal. Iron ore, iron, granite, like all that will melt in here. And that can cause you issues. All right, now that that steel tile is built, I can then dig like this and build the other one. That's just... What you got to do when you're dealing with magma and super hot stuff, best just to be careful, make sure you're in a vacuum, build diagonally, pick up the debris as you go. And we'll make a nice little spot to heat up some oil. All right, now that we got we, our two metal plates in there, you can see they are quite warm. So I want some insulated tiles over there, and then I can dig this down. But I want to make sure that I can get a door in here and open it so I don't overheat anything. Sure, right now I'm doing this all with four really slow dupes. Here, let me show you what I mean with the door. You want to use a mechanized airlock. And by default, they're closed. Well, if it's closed, it's going to transmit heat. So you want to give it an automation signal, but it's got to be green. So if you toss your thermal sensor in there, and we'll say if you are below, send a green signal, below 100. So that's what we want. We want that door to be open, but we don't want to build it until we can make it open. So we are going to put in the automation signal and wire before the door. So this is where the door is going to be. This is another tile. And this right here will be our automation signal. So we want to do that first. Now that that is in, we can put in the door. We want to make it out of steel. And we can also get the power wire to make it open and close faster. Again, everything down here out of steel. Now when my dupes build this door, it should open automatically. And you see the door already heated up quite a bit. Where's the properties? Oh, it still says 45. But it was on its way up. That conductive wire is at 500 degrees. So now we want metal tiles. And we'll sweep that up. So because that door is open, it's not going to transmit heat up to these tiles, so we don't instantly flash our petroleum from crude oil to petroleum to sour gas. That is what we are trying to avoid. So now these tiles are made, and you see they're only 23 degrees. 
That is great. So now we can dig all of this. Sweep up that little bit, and then we can put insulated tiles on the other side. Now, all of this I'm making out of obsidian just because even though they're insulated tiles, they can occasionally exchange heat. So obsidian just means that they won't melt. So melting point 2700, magma 18, 1900. Looks like this is only 1600 degree magma. So no risk of it melting. Once you get above this point, igneous rock is fine. One thing you definitely want to pay attention to is where's the hot stuff? So this top layer of abyssalite isn't that hot, but there's a hot bit right there. If you run any liquid across this, even though abyssalite shouldn't conduct any heat, it will flash. So you want to make sure you take out the hot abyssalite and get it out of your way. So we're just going to do this and replace it all with insulated tiles. And then we will sweep it up. And we'll make a nice little hot spot there to sweep it up into. I'm kind of doing this on purpose where we're digging into some magma. Yeah, it'll make your dupes hot. Over here, I don't want to sweep igneous rock anymore because now my igneous rock is going to be super hot. We don't want to take it through the liquid lock and break it. So let's turn off igneous there and turn it on here. And if you get some magma around, you can use temp shift plates. There's a bunch of ways of turning this back into rock so it's out of your way and not going to break everything. Well, now I'm up to here and I've still got this pool of magma to deal with. So I find it easiest if you just take some granite, which I've got plenty of. Some granite temp shift plates. Should turn that back into igneous rock pretty quick. Got one last little bit. I don't want to mop it because I don't want to carry around bottles of hot stuff. And there we go. And now the temperature plates are a little bit warm. Not a big deal. Nope. We want to deconstruct background buildings. There we go. And then, as usual, sweep it up, make it clean so you don't have hot material for your dupes to drag to places they shouldn't. All right, now that all this is cleaned up, we can get on to the actual pipe part of this. We want to have at least two tiles high up over here. We want a pump made out of steel. We then want some sort of metal that won't melt. So copper is a good choice. Steel, obviously, good choice. And you typically don't want these last two tiles to be radiant pipe. You want to use insulated pipe because there is the possibility of this petroleum being hot enough to crack your pipe if you're running more than a kilo. And then we have our dropper. Now, I tend to run the oil through this petroleum first. It doesn't really matter. And then we want to get our input pipe to someplace with some controls. We want a liquid valve to be able to control how much. And we want a liquid shutoff to control when it turns off and when it turns on. And we can use hydro sensors, we can use all sorts of stuff, but this will work just fine. And bring it over here to my oil source. And my dupes are doing a good job of getting the piping in. We've got power wires coming in for the door. And we got an output pipe for the pump. And then some place to put the petroleum once this is running. Oh, looks like my dupes have got a little bit of wire left to do, and then we're going to be ready to turn this on. Now, this is the basis of every petroleum boiler. Whether you're doing it with steps or you're doing it straight across, it doesn't really make a difference as long as you understand the concept that you need to get this side up above 403. You then counterflow, so you're warming up the oil on the way in, cooling off the petroleum on the way out, and then you're good to go. 
So you ask, why are there so many designs that are huge? All of that is based on your heat source. This is running off of a magma biome, essentially infinite heat. Not quite, but a whole lot. If you're trying to use a minor volcano, they don't produce that much magma. So you need to make your counterflow system longer in order for you to get the most petroleum boiling out of the heat without wasting. So now we've got our oil coming in. We're gonna have it come out at five kilos. And now I like to click on the wrong thing. I like to click to send just a little bit of oil through just to make sure my temperature sensor doesn't do anything funky. Perfect, it didn't close the door. That's exactly what I wanted. So I want you to come through and right now I'm cranking it all the way up because I need a full tile of oil over here to absorb the heat. The first time this closes, this temperature spikes. The more oil you have, the less chance you have of getting above 550. So you got about 100 degrees to work with between flashing to petroleum and flashing to sour gas. So a nice pool of oil just prevents that. And you can put some automation over here to turn this pump on and off. There's lots of things you can do to make this bigger and fancier and more efficient, but this is the basis of the design. So I'm focused on those walls. Okay, so we're almost up to a full tile. What is a full tile, like 800? So we can start to set this to, you know, if this is below 70. Or now we want it to be above 70. You see how we flipped it? So now we're mount we want to know when the temperature is too hot. So you just gotta monitor that. There's our first tile, so let's set this up to 200. It closes. But you can see this tile's already up to almost 400. So you just gotta be careful of that. Now that we got a full tile, we can turn off the incoming oil. And let's set this back down. We don't want to do a full pipe yet. We're going now. Our sensor comes up in temperature. Opens the door. Perfect. This comes back down. And I just find that's just a nice safe way of getting everything started by not overshooting the temperature. And with this much oil, there's no chance of it flashing or spiking too quick. So I think on most of my small boilers, four tiles. On this one, I've got eight available. You see this tile is well above the flash point of petroleum, but we're not quite up to the flash point of sour gas. And it opens. Now we move up to the next stage. Yep, and there it goes. Even though this was only set to 375, this still overshot the flash point of petroleum. And that's why you wait. Perfect. And now we'll come up a little bit more. And there we go. Now that's all petroleum. We can now turn this on. It's not going to counterflow because obviously this isn't full. And we can bring this up to like 400. You want to be a few degrees below because what you don't want is this pipe to break. When the oil comes in, it displaces the petroleum. And so you kind of get this situation where a blob of oil will form, push a bit of petroleum out the top, and then it comes back down. Sure, we're getting some free food. Good work, dupes. And so now we're just waiting for this, these four tiles to fill up with petroleum. And we're running at five kilos, so we're not running super quick. We can crank this up to 10. You just gotta make sure you're paying attention. And during the initial heat up phase, you have no counterflow heat. This oil's coming in at 76, 
and it's basically coming out of this pipe at 76. The reason you use a petroleum boiler is you get to heat the oil on the way in and cool the petroleum on the way out, which makes it more efficient. Because running 10 kilos straight into a magma biome does work, but you can see like this magma is actually dropping in temperature. Each time that door closes, you do lose heat pretty quick when you're running 10 kilos into it. But we should be just about ready to counterflow. And I think we need 700 kilos. Yeah, seven something kilos, 700 something kilos of petroleum is then a full tile. And as this little blob is actually crude oil, it'll force some up. There it is. Not that the temperature will show us anything, but we can start to see the temperature of the incoming oil going up. So we were at 76 and now it's cranking. Let's turn this down from 10. Let's come down to a quarter of a pipe. There we go. So now we have 2.5 kilos coming in at 76. And then as it comes across this pipe, you can see its temperature climbing up. You wanna make sure this tile is below 400. So you can see the petroleum here is almost 400 that could crack your pipes. So that's why there's these two insulated tiles. But now this crude oil is 380. So the amount of heat it takes to go from 388 to 402 is a very small amount. In fact, that's still coming up. And we'll probably see it each time the door closes that that comes up a little bit more. But we've got 10, 10 degrees of Celsius to deal with before we crack the pipes. But now that this is heating up so much, you see this door is not closing very often because it doesn't have to. And here we'll turn you up to 401. And you see the petroleum temperature just spiked up to 402. So that would be enough to crack our pipes, but luckily back here, it's down below 400. No worried of cracking pipes. So there you go. There are some dupes building a Petroleum boiler, important things, make a vacuum, make sure this door is open before you do anything so that you don't overheat your oil and make sour gas. And make sure you have some controls for how much oil you're sending in and turning it on and off. You could put in a sensor here to only turn this pump on when this is full. Yeah, once you get these basics down, then you can start to build the big ones. And let me pop into debug mode and I'll kind of show you a big one and why we build it that big. So as I'm building this, we've got a minor volcano over here. Let's just analyze that real quick. And it erupts again. That 12 cycles, I'll just spawn in some magma. But what I wanted to point out is petroleum doesn't flow infinitely. So once you get past about 15 tiles, it's kind of tough for it to flow. So typically when you're making a counterflow system, if you make it 15 wide for your steps, you'll have the petroleum flow off nice and easily. So here's a much bigger example. We gotta wait for all this to kind of come through. As soon as that hits, and we're gonna say if you are above. And boom, stopped. And we can slowly increase the temperature as we go. Now in this case, I'm running off of a minor volcano and I just spawned in some magma, but this is gonna solidify. So you have to come up with a plan of dealing with the magma. There are bunches of different ways of doing it. You can just put a, a robo miner in here to dig it out. You can do you know, a nice automated system that Francis John has shown in plenty of his videos where it automatically cycles through it. Tons of examples online. What I want to talk about is the fact that you need to have this be longer to not use up as much heat. So we're going to actually try to cool that down. In fact, we're going to turn this one off and crank this one all the way up. 
So right now we're going to suck a whole lot of heat out of here. Because we got to fill this whole thing up with oil before counter flows. Now, in the real game, you're trying to build around a magma biome. You don't, sometimes you can't put stuff exactly where you want it. Oh yeah. This is why you run the... That is exactly why there's radiant pipe here to cool this pump down. Let's just deconstruct you. We don't need it. Yeah, so here we are running at 10 kilos. And now we got to start getting this heat up. Oh, there. It happened. Perfect. You can see there's a little bit of sour gas in here. What happened was a little bit of oil flashed to petroleum. So even though there was a big chunk of crude oil, that little bit of petroleum was enough to flash to sour gas. And when that happens, it's fine. We will turn the pump off. I tend to make these so that I can uh, maintain. So that's why I've got ladders in here and it's too high so my dupes can come in there and do stuff. In fact, we'll even put a ladder all the way down. Yeah, so this will keep flashing, but now we need a couple of pumps. And as long as it's too high, you should be able to deal with it. And we can actually take out those two. And now my dupes can put a pump in here. You definitely want to turn off the oil because you want to be able to get all this gas out. And if there's gas, if there's liquid dripping here and dripping here, you won't be able to get this gas out of the middle. And that gas is hot and can exchange heat. So we put in a couple of pumps. Suck this back down to a vacuum, and we're good to go. Now, because this pump should never be in contact with liquid, I'm good to go to turn this back on. Automation-wise, this sensor says turn this pump on. This sensor says turn the oil on. So in case this ever overflows, it'll automatically turn the oil off. And there's still a bit of sour gas flowing around. Not a huge deal. There you go. Now we're just waiting for this to fill up. And note how hot this petroleum is. It's 420 degrees, even though this sensor is set for 401. So that's why you risk breaking these pipes, is this petroleum can get too hot. So let's turn this down to 398. Oh, there we go. So this is what happens when you are not efficient. You know, we are sucking a whole lot of heat out of this magma and this isn't going to erupt for another eight cycles. Now, luckily, my igne hot igneous rock holds a whole lot of heat. So we're going to be able to get this running off of this much magma, but you've got to have a plan on how to deal with magma turning into rock from your minor volcanoes. And there we go. A little bit of the counterflow starting. Now, as soon as that happens, this crude oil will jump up in temperature and this will become much more efficient. You see the crude oil is already up to 260, 270 as it keeps going, you get a temperature gradient coming down. So now this petroleum coming out, 72, 73, its temperature is gonna keep going up. And that is why you build these bigger. The more steps you have, the more efficient you get. At some point, you do get to diminishing returns. So typically it's three steps out of copper for a major volcano, you actually want four to five steps for a minor volcano, but this really does increase efficiency quite a bit. Yes, yeah, we're already down 800 degrees over here. So there we go. That is dupes building a petroleum boiler. This is the basics. 
kind of what you need to do. And then you want more and more steps depending on how efficient your heat source is. If you're using a thermium aqua tuner, same idea. You don't want to waste a whole bunch of energy trying to make the aqua tuner hot when you only want to get a couple more degrees out of it. So thank you all very much for watching. Thanks for the suggestion for making a tech tip video on dupes actually building the petroleum boiler. Hopefully you learned something. If you have questions or comments, let me know. And if you have any ideas for a tech tip video, post those and I will attempt to make it. Hope you all just have a wonderful day and enjoy playing the game.